breaking every chain that burned you. We need each other now more than ever. Clearly. So, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Music Mind. My name is Shem Melius, and seated next to me, co hosting, is my wife, Shakina Melius. All right, so it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening once more. Last week we dealt with a music video and song by Jared, Keep Your Lights On. And this one spoke about the social issue of, um, what was it? <laughs> well, mainly abuse. Yes, sexual uh, abuse. Yeah. So the focus was sexual abuse. And today we're going to be highlighting another um, son of the soil and Shem here is going to be telling us a little bit more about this one. So yes, on this episode we will be featuring, yes, an ambassador, a son of the soil, um, Emron Henry. Um, he's from St. Lucia but resides in the United States of America has done wonderful things in the music, has done great things, and we will definitely be reviewing the song, What Is Going On. Right. Um, so, I mean, Emran is a household name. Um, if you remember him, or if even if you don't, you will get to know that he was the first Stack West winner back in the 2000s. Um, he won with this song, What Is Going On. So we will be talking to Emran. We, we are virtual right now because of COVID-19, but we give thanks because the opportunities are everywhere. So we ask him a few questions. He will be visiting us. He will be visiting you all. And he'll be telling you all about the background of this music, um, what is going on with him, um, mm -hmm. what is happening in his world, and how has he contributed um, significantly to the music and to the well-being of our people and the society? So, before we delve into the meat of the matter, uh, we're going to be playing a little piece of the song so you could have a little idea of what song we're referring to, and the link will be put in the description for your reference. So do have a look at it and. I'm sure you will be touched as much as we have been touched by this music. Here you go. So welcome back. This was the song, What Is Going On? Right. And I still ask the question today, what really is going on, especially in St. Lucia 
Um, I think we now are 34 or 35 homicides for the year, which is very unfortunate. It's a sad time for us. Mm -hmm. And if you listen closely, the song speaks to situations like that. Um, so this is one of the reasons why we felt this was a great feature for today, even after the song has been out for a Seven while years. now. Yes. So I happen to know Emron Henry personally, um, great friend, great brother. Um, I met him earlier this year, so you know I'm excited to talk about him um, because he's one who has remained true to the cause. Um, he has also contributed significantly in my musical growth um, as a young artist, singer, minister myself. So I, I just want to say he's a mentor, um, not just to me, but to a lot of persons out there. And, and um, I want to say we will be going into some interviews with him. We ask him a few questions and he has not fallen short. He has sent us his material, and we do want to get into the time where we'll play this so you could hear and know what's going on. So like you all know, we um, focus primarily on social issues, um, spiritual discourse, and music here at, on Music Mind. So of course, Emron Henry's song is quite relevant and we will definitely be doing some deciphering. So we're going to give you a chance to hear what he has to say, um, for he, to hear what social issues he thought um, were pertinent and, and came out of the song. And then we will come back and engage the discussion. Yes. Hello, good evening. I just want to say thank you to Shem and Shekina for inviting me to be on Music Mind. Thank you so much. The question was asked, who is Emron Henry? Emron Henry is a minister, is a father, is a prophet, is a preacher, is a praise and worship leader. Um, Emron Henry is a songwriter and producer. What inspired me to write this song? Well, I wrote this song in 2002. And um, this song helped me to win the Kevin and Wallace Tarquist um, competition in 2004. What really inspired me to write this song was all the things that were happening in the country at that time. Um, I love watching news, I love watching um, things that are happening on the news concerning my country. And um, when, when, I, when I watched what's going on in the country, you know, the, the, the crime situation, um, incest and, and all these things that were going on, uh, you know, the, the whole idea came to me. It's like God just released this song into my spirit. What is going on? It's like we need to ask the country a question. What is going on with all the issues that are happening? And it was just like giving the country a reality check. So this, this song came out of all the different things that were attacking our country, attacking our neighborhoods, attacking our families, attacking our marriages. And uh, you know, it's, it's been a, it's a blessing to, to know that it has touched a lot of people. Some of the social issues that were highlighted in this song are violence, poverty, substance abuse, incest, sexual perversion, and prostitution. Do I think this song is relevant today and why? Yes, now more than ever, this song is relevant um, because we find that the same spirits that were attacking us years ago is the same spirits that we are still dealing with. We are still dealing with issues of poverty. We are still dealing with issues of crime, of hatred, of substance abuse, sexual perversion. So this song is relevant today and the message is still needed what is going on we still need to speak to this generation about what is happening in society why is this happening why are they going for this why are they going for that why are families being broken down why why are people into um, alcoholism alcohol abuse so this song is needed in this season so that young people will understand hey 
and not just young people but everybody will understand that there there are spiritual powers that are after us and that are destroying our families destroying our countries destroying our homes so i i still ask the question what is going on will you answer so we are back and you heard it for yourself you heard a lot of stuff from emron henry um how the song came about the inspiration behind it uh, and some of the issues that he believed that he spoke about in the song so what do you think about the song what is going on well i i think this song like we've we've been echoing throughout um the previous episodes of music mind this song is relevant for today and this is the kind of content that we would like um to encourage people to write write about what is happening write about the social ills write something that can encourage someone write something that if you look back on you could say yes this has something that i could take on and i could ponder on so i think this song is a really good song quite relevant for the time and um emran like many other artists have touched some very serious issues in this in this song indeed i i mean the song started by saying i see violence and crime everywhere and not for little youth it's like they don't care and, and it's just like me maybe just speaking to you and say wow i watched the news last night and then i realized that they found the body in a small portion of um, marijuana like uh, like a small farm mm -hmm. and he spoke in the song like he's just relaying some things that are happening and um these are the kinds of writing that are like reality um, where one speaks truth mm -hmm. um, so that the layman, the common man, the intellectual man can listen and understand what is taking place. So we, we realize this song talks about the vagrant. It talks about the youth who is struggling mm -hmm. and um, seem to have lost direction. Um, so it speaks even to leaders. It speaks to the leaders and encourage them that you are the leaders um, that will guide the youth. You are the mentors that should mentor the youth. So the song is rich with content. It is rich with reality that we should refer to from time to time and um, take reference. Definitely. You know, to be able to move on. Um, and have a better society, a better people that will serve God as he speaks of it in the song. Mm -hmm. And as I, I think one of the greatest focuses for me in the song is the issue of violence. And of course we know here on Music Mind, we, we go into the nitty gritties of the social issues. Um, but violence in St. Lucia has been something that is, that is constant. And for some reason, we have not been able to curb the, the amount of violence that we have on the island as much as we would like for it to happen. But why do you think, why do you think our youth res are resorting to that kind of violence? Very interesting question. Um, I could say from the top of my head, it's an issue of sin. Uh, and I could, I, I guess Emran would respond to it in that way. It's definitely an issue of sin. But then le let's go, let's go to something that persons could understand: um, hopelessness. Mm -hmm. So you have a set of youth, and because it speaks a lot about the youth, youth who probably have been socialized mm -hmm. to understand that uh, I need to defend myself. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. I need to um, get that whole family thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of youth from a tender age join guns. Right. And this is a family for them. And um, we have these other issues about based on where you come from, it's not guaranteed that you get a job. Um, based on your life circumstance, mm -hmm. It does not allow you the opportunity, even though you are very intellectual, you know, you know, you have naturally bright people, um, because your parents are not able, they might not be able to send you to school. So what does that do? You, 
are not able to complete school. Mm -hmm. It leaves you at home. It leaves you idle. And some persons at that time might not necessarily think about, maybe I should go and learn a trade. Maybe I should go and do that. Even those who try to do it sometimes mm -hmm. get shorn away and persons tell you, I don't have time for this. You are, I'm, you know, the whole stereotyping kind exactly. of things. So those are one, some of the things I would say that would land persons into those situations. It's interesting that you mention um, where you come from can affect you and can cause you to lead a, a life that you do not necessarily wish to lead. I remember, I'm not sure if it was a, a documentary or an interview, but this, um, this group of people were, were speaking and, and sharing their um, life experiences. And they were saying that just because of where they live, just because of where they come from, they have been stereotyped and, of course, um, marginalized in that way. So they do not get, even though they go to an interview or they apply for a job, the opportunities, the chances, the probability for them to even get called just because their address says that, just because there's probably their surname says that, that the probability for them to get called is already brought down. And so we have a youth who, who have a desire in as much as we may have some who do not have that desire, but we do have a set of youth who have that desire to go and progress in life, to be meaningful people who contribute positively to society. But just because their opportunities are diminished in that way, they begin to, to react and respond with a level of violence. It's true. We, we have a lot of persons in who find themselves in a lot of unfortunate um, circumstances. As always, I like to speak about um, persons who have contributed um, to what we speak about. Um, persons may know of this artist, Itana. She has this music video. It's a song called Wrong Address. Now, this is an artist from Jamaica. And it just goes to show that what is happening here is also happening in Jamaica and mm -hmm. it will be happening in some other islands, Grenada, Dominica, and all of those places because human beings are involved. But the, the, the song and the music video portrays it nicely. This girl is educated. She went to school, did all of those things, but she could not get the job just because of her address. To the end of the music video, she was able to get the job just by changing, changing her, her address. Yeah. And um, this is very sad. So again, we have persons with the authority. What do they do? They restrict you mm -hmm. um, from getting the opportunity just because of something as simple as that. And as, as, you, as you say that, and people who have the ability to push us to the right direction or push us to the the, the wrong direction mm -hmm. i remember um there was an article online and I, I, I was reading this article and it was speaking about employers who give uh past employers who give wrong or bad um recommendations, recommendations. now of course we do not want uh, an employer to give a recommendation that is not true but a lot of the time, you have people, just because of their position, they're in a position of authority, they are the ones to write that letter of recommendation, and they tend to write negative things about the individual. And that in itself can cause people to not hire you. The frustration with not being able to get a job because of that recommendation as I say that, I remember a particular employer. This employer told me specifically that she would not send that recommendation just because of the way that this person perceived the, the, the potential employee. And it is very sad. It is very sad that these things happen because you find yourself in a place where the only thing you feel that you could do 
Of course, we know that this is not the only thing you could do. But the only thing you feel that you could do is to resort to maybe theft. You're hungry. Your children are hungry. You pass there. You see something. You see someone's. The, the first thought is not this is somebody else's thing and taking it yeah. is, is stealing. The first thought is I have hungry children and I need now to see how I could feed those children. So you see how the whole process leads to violence? It's a cycle. So we're, here we have it, um, people, that we could choose how we contribute. And are you in a position to help? Yes. Um, yes. And not helping? Here we have it. Um, are we punishing because we have the power? Or are we a blessing? You know, I mean, I, I could. The Bible talks about heaping coals of fire, even so, um, on someone's head. Basically, it's saying that love the person, even though they do something bad towards you. So, I'm saying that not to, to persons of influence, persons of power, we may be saying those persons, the family line is bad, so they have had a record of doing this and, and, and doing those wrong things. So we will feed them with a long stick. Uh, I'm saying sometimes we need to be merciful. We need to organize programs, uh, programs where we could help groom persons mm -hmm. into becoming better individuals that could contribute to society. Again, as we, we speak about um, persons in a crucial address, you know, maybe a ghetto address, um, like we normally would say. One of the things I recognize about those individuals, when someone, persons who live in the ghetto, as we would call it, don't realize that they live in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. For them, this is home. Um, that's how they grew up. The ghetto is not ghetto for them. It's home. Um, so while I may go there and feel a little uncomfortable, those persons are comfortable. They right. can sit anywhere. And they know people within the community. And even the people that we think that are bad, they are happy when one of their own go out and excel. Exactly. They have their back and they say, you see that guy? Yo, that man going to be a doctor, you know. Yo, go to school. They, they, they still don't want them to join gangs mm -hmm. and they give them the support. It's, the only thing is that they may not be able to help them in the way um, that we expect them to help. Mm -hmm. But there is the moral support um, coming from most of them. Yes, and, and as you said, what comes to mind is, um, you know, in, in every community, there's some little place where some guys gather. Yeah. And, and more often than not, you might find one or two who probably have um, experienced pris imprisonment. And one fundamental thing is, we as a society, we tend to place some stigma. We attach stigma and stereotype on those individuals how open are we to those persons who may have changed their lives around who may have that strong deep desire to change and to go into the world and to do something make something of themselves like i always say we have to be willing to give um, persons the chance and the opportunity. One may fail once, um, go to prison, but he has done his time, she has done her time, and, and we are of the mindset, or we should be of the mindset, that they have been rehabilitated. They have gone through a time period where they change and can come back into society as a renewed individual um, hoping to get a chance. So it is left up to us now to allow them, um, to give them the opportunity. And I'm not saying we, we have to be careful, we have to be mindful, we have mm -hmm. to um, be cautious about a lot of things. But one of the things that we must remember is that those persons would have served the time and it is okay. Mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity. You could tell them, I want to give you an opportunity exactly. so you could make the most of it. Make a way for them. Prepare. Exactly. Yeah. 
exactly and i mean the scripture talks about the young mental the old sorry yeah, mental, the young. mental the young so the old men have a responsibility the older men have a responsibility um to mentor and to to mold um the younger men who have that who who have that willingness to be mentored and the same goes for the older women um towards the younger women and the question again is how much of our older men are giving themselves to that kind of mentorship <laughs> I do believe that we have a few who are involved, um, but there's always room for improvement. And even as we speak about older men teach the younger, um, experience is also something that you get at any age. Mm -hmm. So it means, as the Bible says, as so iron sharpen if iron, right. so um, we can offer guidance and mentorship to each other so i may have experience in that i could teach you um i may know this i could teach you right. you may know this you teach me so we just need to be open to it and we must know how to teach that is something again um <laughs> if if a man or, or a woman for that matter has a background of violence we need to Toned down. We need to know how to approach those right. individuals um, to get the message across. We cannot be dealing with them violently and trying to change them from what they are trying to leave. We need to find various methods. Um, our power of verbals are very important. The use of words. Maybe we should say it in English instead of Creole. In St. <laughs> Lucia, we have two languages, the Creole. If you really want to get it across, you have to say it in Creole. Everyone will <laughs> understand it. It's raw, it's harsh, and it's straight to the point. So uh, they have some of those things that you should not say in Creole, but you should say it in standard <laughs> English. And um, the Bible says a soft answer to the way wrath, wrath right. but grievous would stir up anger. So, we must know what to do, how to say, how not to say. And on that note, um, for the young people who may be watching, be open to the, the mentorship that is going to be offered to you. Sometimes we, we tend to want to do our own thing so much that we forget that if we go a wrong way, if we are bent one way and someone is trying to bend us another way, because it is a bending that is taking place, there will be a level of discomfort. So be open. Be open. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> we're speaking about what is going on. And, and those are questions um, to our society based on what is taking place in our society. And those are the questions that Emran asked. And I think to the end of the song, he was, yes, he sent out something to the leaders. Um, it, it, it's a tough thing that he said. He said, lawyers, doctors, pastors, and leaders. And I guess there are more persons that you could add to that, prime ministers, all of those things. All of those persons are, and and. and offices rather better get in line or the blood is on your shoulder some of us act like it's not our responsibility to care for the community so it's just me myself and i or it's just once my family is all right that's okay but in the song he call out the lawyers the pastors the doctors the leaders and we have persons um within those capacities contributing to the demise of our youth yes abusing them in mm -hmm. various ways mm -hmm. and um further bringing them into the ditch so again i am highlighting and i am standing and supporting him in that 
calling for persons of authority, right. calling persons of influence to use your influence in a way that will be beneficial to yourself, it will be beneficial to the youth, it will be beneficial to the greater good. And this is what God is asking of us to be mentors, to be that kind of persons that will advocate change and not bring in our youth in a place of demise. Exactly. And we have a, a lot of our youth who are going through so much, so, so much. And they start at a very young age. Mm -hmm. they, they experience things that they may never share with anyone. And we have to be careful that we do not take for granted that the little ill behaviors that we see, we do not take for granted when they start very young, that we try to deal with them in, a, in, in the proper way, try to mold them, try to have that level of, of compassion and love. And not just say, so you see that child, there is no child that is not good. You who are in a position of authority, like you were saying, you, the onus is on you to take on mm -hmm. that responsibility and to mold that child in as much as it is difficult. And sometimes we, we, we do not understand why we are in leadership. Leadership, you're in leadership not necessarily because you people just see you as a leader. You have been placed there. And if you accept that mandate, then it, there is some level of accountability that comes with it. There is some level of responsibility that comes with it. So the expectation is for you not to just neglect the issues that will arise not to just take your authority and use it for the demise of others. True. You have that responsibility. So Evan Henry is asking the question, what is going on with the youths in our land these days? And I would, I would like to say that while his focus is, is, is the youth, while he's, he's really, he, you could see that he has a great passion for the youth and to see them doing better but even in doing better the the generation ahead of them have that responsibility to guide them and to help them to reach that place of betterment so do your part most definitely so while the youth are being called <laughs> the older persons are being called as well because we have to work in collaboration so yes Pastors, doctors, leaders, masons, bus bus drivers. <laughs> yeah, now I say bus drivers. Just just earlier I was watching a song. Um yeah. Yeah, that, that was a great song. It, it's in Creole, you know. By what's his name? But yeah, I was watching this song and it was um talking about a young girl and her mother was telling her go to school to learn. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then he was saying in the song that you are too young um, for all of those kinds of things. You, there with a bus driver and all of those kinds of things. So I'm saying this because a, a lot of the young girls fall prey to that. And um, we need people like that to influence them differently. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, encourage them to go to school. Encourage them to do something good with their life and not abuse their vulnerability um, because at that time the brains are not fully developed exactly. and some may just be seeking something again because of the lack from home all right so there is so much that we could say and we could continue on yeah. and continue on but of course we have to come to an end and um before we leave, Emron Henry has a message for us all. And, we, and I hope that we are all encouraged by what he has to say. I think what, he's, what he has to say is quite important and it will bring us to a place of reflection. So listen up and hear what he has to say. Yes, most definitely. And don't forget to check him out. Um, he's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Follow him up. Subscribe to whatever it is, get in tune with his ministry mm -hmm. and get in tune with what is taking place with him. Mm -hmm.
What encouragement can I give young people today based on how society and government? Uh, my encouragement to young people is that build a relationship with God because society will always be under attack by spiritual forces and the only one who can get us out or get us through situations is God. When we have a relationship with God, we are able to build ourselves spiritually to fight against spiritual attacks. Everything that I mentioned in the song are basically spiritual attacks that are released and influenced by demonic warfare. Young people need to understand that, hey, we are living in a world, but we are living in a world where we have an enemy. The enemy is not our brother. The enemy is not our sister, but the enemy is the devil. And as long as we have a relationship with our God, with our creator, he can protect us. He can give us power over our enemy which is the devil and we can be triumphant in anything that we're going through you might be a young person watch this you might be a young person you might be living in poverty but i'm here to tell you this is not where you're going to stay forever god will always elevate you as long as you believe in god as long as you trust in god god is able to elevate you and take you out of poverty take you out of incest take you out of pain god is a healer jesus is a healer and i want to speak to somebody who's watching this segment today of music mind and let you know that god is the sustainer god is our strength god is our shield so young people i want to encourage you i want to encourage you do not follow the wrong crowds do not follow the wrong set of people stay in god stay in god and build up yourself build up yourself in the word of God and in the light of God finally I want to end with this today the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34 righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people I want to speak to the Caribbean I want to speak to St. Lucia I want to speak to America I want you to know that God does not like sin God don't like sin at all at all and I want you to understand that we as a people it's time that we stand up for righteousness it's time that we stand up for what God believes and when we stand up for what God believes and what God wants out of us we will have better communities we will have better homes better marriages and we will see decrease in crime prostitution sexual perversion in our streets, in our homes, in our schools, in our countries. So I want to live, live, live this with everybody. Jesus loves you. Thank you. I love you, black woman. I want to hurt you. Never desert you. I'll be there for you. My strong black woman. I want to hurt you. Never desert you. I'll be there for you. I love you, black woman.